Good morning, everyone. Let's try it again. Good morning, everyone. All right. The Army Science Conference is a biennial event that was inaugurated at West Point in 1957 to provide a unique Army forum for the presentation of and open exchange of ideas and results. This conference recognizes the accomplishments of scientists and engineers who work on issues and challenges of re relevance and of high importance to the Army. Since 1957, the Army Science Conference has grown. It started out to be very small, and we just talked to ourselves. But it's grown to become an international event. Around 1,500 representatives from the government, academia, industry, and our international partners are here for this year's conference. Welcome to the 27th Army Science Conference. Give yourselves applause. Thank you. The opening ceremony should remind us that we are all part of a great institution, the United States Army. Tradition plays a fundamental role in Army culture. And this Army Science Conference is an Army s and community tradition. The theme of this conference is transformational science and technology enabling full spectrum operations. Now, we in the Army are very proud of the s and community's accomplishments, not just our own, but all of ours. Okay? Over these past two years, since we had this last conference, these accomplishments stem from the efforts of the scientists and engineers and technologists and inventors and discoverers and innovators and who are in the Army labs and centers, as well as in our partners' organizations, in industry, in academia, in other services, and in our allied partners. The accelerated fielding of these solutions into the battlefield first in Iraq and Afghanistan, has been truly remarkable. Soldiers and warfighters remain the focal point of our army and of our transformation efforts. The nature of the conflicts today differs significantly from the wars that this nation has experienced before. And our brave soldiers face an elusive and adaptive enemy an enemy not dressed in uniform, not attacking in mass with tanks and ships and airplanes. This enemy may appear anywhere, one-on-one, -on, -one, on any one day, to be a friend. And the very next day, to be a foe, determined to maim and kill soldiers and innocent civilians without discrimination. And this last nine years, a persistent global conflict against this adaptive enemy and this complex environment have taught us a lesson. What we have learned is that our soldiers must have a wide range of advanced and new capabilities. And these capabilities grow out of a broad spectrum of technologies developed by this community for near, mid, and far-term applications. The job of our S&T community is to maintain our science and technology, engineering and mathematics skills, knowledge, experience, and expertise, and to use these to give our soldiers the most reliable, effective equipment and tools for their conducting their diverse missions to make them the decisive edge. Now, we know that through such capabilities, our warfighters will continue to adapt quickly. We've seen this over the years. And be effective against any adversary on any battlefield at any time with any of our partners and to secure our freedoms around the world. Today, Army s and is very different from the environment into which I entered as a young scientist 30 years ago. When I entered, I was told that I didn't need to be so aggressive, 
that I didn't need to be in such a hurry to develop anything in my laboratory. Because it'd be 20 or 30 years before anything that I did in S&T would ever touch the hands of a soldier. Not so today. By the way, I never accepted that premise. <laughs> okay. And I still don't accept that present premise, and you shouldn't accept that premise. Scientists and engineers today don't sit in their labs or at their computers all the time. They interact with warfighters. They go to the field. They have warfighters into their, their facilities so that they understand the demands for technology-enabled capabilities, and they work with warfighters in theater to share our solutions that provide the advantage we promise. Now, just like our soldiers, Army S&T must adapt. We're making shifts in our ability to respond much more quickly to meet soldiers' needs in the current fight. And at the same time, we can't forget to continue to press forward with the exploration of technologies that will enable and ensure that this nation maintains its technological advantage on any future battlefield. Now, as in the 26 previous Army Science Conferences, we here today are gathered, and this week are gathered to share our knowledge, share it with one another, and understand recent advances that have been made in this S&T community in support of our warfighters. That's why you're here. We are fortunate to have a lot of special, special people. And unfortunately, I can't recognize everybody. But I am going to recognize a few people who are here with us today and some who will be here with us throughout the week. And I'd like to recognize them now. The first, I am very honored to introduce the official host of our conference and my boss, the Honorable Malcolm Ross O'Neill, Assistant Secretary of the Army, Acquisition Logistics and Technology. Thank you, sir, for being here. We appreciate it, and we look forward to what you're going to be telling us later. And although unable to be here in Florida, General Peter Corelli, Vice Chief of Staff of the Army, will be speaking to us today by VTC. I'd also like to introduce Dr. Scott Fish, who is the new Army Chief Scientist in the Office of the Assistant Secretary of the Army, Acquisition, Logistics, and Technology. Scott, please raise your hand. And it's also a privilege to introduce two of our speakers for later today. Major General Meredith W.B. Temple, Deputy Chief of Engineers and Deputy Commanding General, United States Army Corps of Engineers. Sir. Thank you. And Command Sergeant Major Earl L. Rice, Command Sergeant Major, 18 Airborne Corps. Uh, we were going to have a couple of, uh, of staffers who did not make it, so we're going to skip this part, and I'm going to do a little bit of ad-libbing because I'd like to recognize Command Sergeant Major Jeffrey Mellinger, who is from the Army Materiel Command, and a great friend of Army s &T. I'm waiting for the, the script to catch up here. Hang on. Keep going. Keep going. We're, we're going to improvise a little. There we go. Now, this is very serious. We are, it is a special honor for me to introduce some very important guests joining us. We have five soldiers who in their service to the nation were seriously wounded. They're sitting over here in the front. We, I welcome you to the con conference. We're glad to have you here. We applaud your sacrifice and your heroism. Gentlemen, thank you and your families for unwavering commitment and courage. Please know that we in this community serve you and your comrades in arms and are very, very proud of you. Everyone, please stand and give these heroes a standing ovation.
Thank you for being here, and we hope it's a good, a good time for you, and you see some of the things that people are doing to try to really help soldiers and your comrades uh, as well. Um, and that brings up one point that we didn't put here, which is there are lots of things that go into S&T, and it's not just about widgets. It's about medical research. It's about the Corps of Engineers. It's about all of the research that we have to do to understand and help these brave folks. Changing gears a little. We have some more folks who are going to be here. They're not here in the hall right now, but a recent White House science fair hosted by the President of the United States showcased young students who were winners of a broad range of science, technology, engineering, and math competitions across the country. At that occasion, President Obama said, and I quote, it is hard to describe just how impressive these young people are. Their work is a testament to the potential that awaits when we inspire young people to take a part in scientific enterprise. The president went on to say, you know, when you first win, or when you win first place at a science fair, nobody's rushing the field or dumping Gatorade over your head. But in many ways, our future depends on what happens in these science contests. What happens when a young person is engaged in conducting an experiment? or writing a piece of software, or solving a hard math problem, or designing a new gadget. Now these remarks by the president speak to the importance of fostering a new generation of scientists and engineers. And one of those priorities of the Army S&T program is to inspire a new generation of scientists and engineers through Army educational outreach programs. This activity involves the work of dedicated inv individuals across five of the Army's major S&T organizations. Programs like the, National, the Army's annual science fair for the nation, e-cyber mission for the sixth through ninth grade students, nationwide, and the Junior Science and Humanities Symposium are designed to speak to our youth's interest in science and math and engineering. We will be seeing, hopefully you will be seeing and taking some time out of your schedules here today to see some of the 120 young eCyber Mission students who are going to be here on Thursday. We also have two of our Junior Science and Humanities Symposium, JSHS winners, who will be with us this week to present their prize winning research at parallel technical sessions. JSHS promotes original research and experimentation in the sciences, engineering, and math at the high school level and publicly recognizes outstanding achievements of these students. I do believe we have the JH, JSHS students. Are you here someplace in the audience? Stand up if you are. I don't see them today. Okay. Um, they're going to be you know, recognized throughout this, please take some time. It is your responsibility and my responsibility to make sure that we replenish the scientists and engineers, that we keep people interested and keep bringing new, I'm going to say blood, into our community. Please, please, please interact with these young students. They are exciting. You will find that they are bright. You will find that they will challenge you. Now, we have excellent, other excellent events uh, planned for the conference this week. It is really important that you make the most of your opportunities here this week. Make sure that you go see the exhibits. Hold technical discussions with presenters and your counterparts. Visit the poster sessions. Engage in discussions with the folks who have the posters. The benefit of this conference is in interacting with each other and those who are present, learning from each other, sharing with each other. That's why we're here. That's why we're glad to have you here. And right now, I would like to thank you once again for being here and say welcome, have a great week.